Yes, hello once again. Welcome back to Classic Dirt Bike TV, where we continue our journey looking at more of those old school vintage dirt bikes from way back in the day. Now, this next featured video is another one of the uh, fantastic bikes I came across at the recent Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show. And this uh, manufacturer originally began by uh, building chassis for uh, Scrambles outfits uh, way back in the 1960s. And naturally, they progressed into making uh, chassis for solo uh, motocross machines. So let's dive straight into that video now and take a look at this beautiful uh, Rind Tut Wasp 600 at Norton. So, uh, as I said, uh, this next classic machine is another uh, one of the fantastic motorcycles that I came across uh, while I was at the 2023 Telford Classic Dirt Bike Show, which is an event well worth uh, paying a visit to if you're into your old vintage dirt bikes because uh, they have hundreds uh, more classics uh, just like this one scattered all over the site uh, over the course of the two days uh, of the show. So what we're looking at here is a Rind Tut Wasp RT3 Solo Scrambler based on a design that was originally conceived by uh, Rob uh, Rind Tut in the early uh, 1960s. Now Wasp motorcycles uh, was, as I said, uh, formed back in the early 1960s when uh, Rob Rind Tut uh, at that time was just a young uh, man who began uh, as an aircraft apprentice uh, making parts and instruments for aeroplanes when he was employed at uh, Boscombe Down in Wiltshire in the UK. Now at the weekends, uh, Rob and his passenger uh, Philip Coates uh, raced a sidecar outfit in the Southern uh, Centre Grass Track Club events, which uh, at that time uh, the bikes and the outfits were uh, more or less just uh, modified road bikes. But uh, Rob uh, wanted something uh, much better, so he set out to design and build his own sidecar chassis, which, uh, as it turned out, was uh, hugely successful, and it wasn't uh, too long before Rob was being inundated with orders uh, for customers' chassis. And so it was then that he decided to go into business for himself. And around 1962, Wasp uh, Motorcycles uh, was born. Now, of course, originally Wasp were renowned uh, for their sidecar uh, motocross and grass track chassis, uh, just like this beautiful example here, which is uh, fitted with a Honda 754 cylinder uh, four stroke engine. But uh, back in the 1960s and 1970s, you'd find these uh, wasp frames uh, fitted with all manner of big uh, twin cylinder power plants, with uh, the big uh, Norton 650s or 750s uh, being among uh, the most popular. And uh, those uh, were usually called uh, Norton uh, wasps. But when you got a dozen or so of these sidecar outfits uh, leaving the start line uh, all at once, it was certainly a sight and a sound that you could never uh, forget. But without doubt, uh, I certainly do like uh, watching uh, these outfits in action on the racetrack, but uh, you'd certainly uh, never get me into one as a passenger. But uh, you just can't help but appreciate the craftsmanship and the engineering that's going in uh, to building uh, one of these outfits. And I'll bet that this example here sounds uh, absolutely fantastic when that big four-cylinder Honda motor uh, gets uh, fired up. But this particular Wasp outfit is without doubt a thing uh, of beauty. But as you can imagine, it was uh, a natural uh, progression that Rob uh, Rind Tut would eventually expand his engineering skills into building these solo motocross uh, chassis because at the time uh, there was certainly a demand for more uh, motocross frames even although uh, some people uh, just can't seem to distinguish uh, these Wasp chassis from a Rickman uh, frame built by the Rickman uh, brothers and at first glance there are a few little similarities between the two because uh, they're similar in their construction and uh, both frames 
are supplied in kit form with only uh, the suspension wheels and motor etc uh, to find to complete the bikes. But once again, and as in the Rickman chassis, these uh, Wasp RT3s uh, store the motor's engine oil inside the frame where it's then uh, pumped around the motor and then back up into the top of uh, the chassis. But these frames are all made from uh, top quality British steel tubing, which are all uh, bronze welded and then uh, usually uh, nickel plated. And the guys at Wasp can uh, normally make you a chassis to accept uh, whatever engine you have in mind. So you can gather that this is a very bespoke and personal service that you receive uh, from the Wasp Motorcycles Company who have been uh, building sidecar and solo frames kits now for over uh, 50 years. And when you uh, buy one of these uh, frame kits, you usually uh, get the chassis, the swing arm, uh, tank, airbox, seat, side panels, and uh, tail cone, and of course, uh, the correct engine mounting plates to suit your particular uh, motor. Then you just have to fit the front and rear suspension and wheels of your choice, and of course, your power plant, and you're almost uh, good uh, to go. But as we move on to our RT3's power plant, now this bike here is powered by a 600cc uh, Norton Dominator four-stroke engine, which uh, is quite similar to the old uh, Norton motors that powered the sidecar outfits uh, back in the day. But uh, even this big British twin is uh, certainly a piece of mechanical sculpture in its own right. And it looks uh, absolutely fantastic sitting inside this uh, wasp frame. But as I said, a twin cylinder four-stroker with these uh, twin straight through header exhaust pipes that run down either side of uh, the motor but uh, no silencers or tailpipes uh, to tone down that wonderful growl from the Norton engine. But as we uh, move on to the transmission side of the motor and uh, as you'd expect uh, it's a Norton uh, four-speed AMC gearbox and uh, Wasp have even engineered their uh, very own little uh, cap there on the gearbox with that rind tut Wasp engraving uh, on the top. But these AMC gearboxes have been uh, well proven down the years and uh, are not only uh, used on these Wasp bikes but uh, a multitude of different other makes and models of British uh, manufactured motorcycles including uh, the likes of uh, all of those wonderful Jap scramblers that we had a look at in my previous uh, video posting. But uh, as far as I know, the clutch on these 600 Dominator Norton motors is uh, basically just a standard uh, wet uh, multi-plate affair that's uh, connected to the crankshaft by way of a primary chain and all encased in this uh, highly polished it's side casing that uh, almost looks like it has a chrome like finish when you look at it but uh, it all complements the many other uh, nicely uh, blinged up parts that are fitted onto this bike but certainly this uh, 600cc dominator uh, norton motor is a perfect choice for this rt3 solo chassis and in fact it would uh, probably even suit one of those uh, sidecar outfit chassis as well, uh, come to think of it, because it certainly uh, would have had enough power and grunt uh, to propel uh, one of those outfits uh, down the track. But it was a bit of a, a shame that uh, both of these machines were inside the halls at Telford, because it would have been uh, quite a treat just to hear that Honda 754 cylinder outfit fire up, and of course this 600cc Norton Twin as well. And so as we move on to the front end of our Wasp uh, Solo, now the forks of course are uh, not supplied with the frame kit as you have to uh, pick these up uh, yourself, but uh, on our RT3 chassis I'm pretty sure that uh, these are a set of uh, BSA triple clamps and forks that are bolted 
onto our bike, which, uh, to be fair, are quite common on most of these old uh, British-made scramblers, and they're certainly period correct for the late uh, 1950s or early uh, 1960s. Okay, they're not uh, ultra high tech compared to the kind of suspension systems that we have on our modern day uh, motocrossers now, but uh, for the time period, these uh, front suspension units were considered uh, quite good uh, for their time. And uh, as there was uh, very little in the way of choice, you just had to work with uh, what you had. Now again, the front hub and brake on our Rintut uh, racer is uh, not a BSA part, but in fact this is a matchless uh, front hub and uh, brake, all made from alloy of course, so it makes it uh, very light. And uh, the stopping power of these big matchless hubs was uh, surprisingly good for an early uh, 1960s design. And again, uh, another reason why these uh, matchless hubs and drum brake systems were used on various other classic scramblers from back in the day. But moving on uh, to the rear hub, which uh, is a BSA part, but uh, this time uh, a BSA QD hub, which uh, naturally stands for a uh, quick detach, uh, where basically you can remove the entire rear wheel and leave uh, the chain, sprocket and rear brake, etc. all intact because uh, part of the hub is uh, sitting on splines, so it makes uh, taking the wheel off uh, a doddle, but uh, a brilliant design for its time, and I can't think why uh, many other uh, manufacturers never employed uh, a similar system. So also at the back end of our Wasp at Norton, we have a good quality pair of YSS classic shocks, which uh, will be a big improvement over some of the earlier suspension units that may have been bolted onto these RT3s in days gone by, but uh, they still have quite a decent amount of adjustment that you can make to the rebound and damping just to help you set up the back of the bike uh, to a decent level. Now, as far as I'm aware, this uh, very nicely sculpted fuel tank is uh, still being manufactured uh, using fiberglass, as of course is uh, traditional with these WASP frame kits down the years, but uh, these fuel cells uh, usually held enough gas to feed uh, whichever make or model of motor that was sitting in the WASP chassis at the time. But one other cautionary point to make is uh, fiberglass uh, fuel tanks uh, don't take too kindly uh, to our modern day fuels as they do tend to eat away at the insides of the tank if the fuel is left inside them uh, for long periods. But of course, that's not an issue if you just drain down the tank if the bike's going to be laid up for long periods. But the remainder of the bike's bodywork, which is said to have been designed by Ken Marsh, is once again all fiberglass and can be painted in a variety of colours or even metallic finishes if that's what you require. So again, it's quite an easy process to put your own personal stamp on your very own Rintut Wasp bike with a huge choice of engines, transmission, suspensions and of course colour choices as well. Now the seat of course uh, comes as part of the WASP frame kit and uh, normally these are all supplied uh, just as a standard uh, black leather uh, foam filled uh, single rider uh, configuration. But again, uh, these can be custom coloured uh, with personalised uh, logos if you want your bike to look uh, somewhat different uh, to the rest of the hive of WASP race machines. Now we just haven't a clue as to uh, what a completed uh, WASP RT3 solo scrambler uh, such as this would uh, cost if you started uh, with the basic frame kit and then added 
of your own uh, motor, uh, front and rear suspension and wheels and all, all of the other accessories that go into building one of these beautiful bikes. But I'll wager that it uh, certainly won't be cheap, but uh, then again, you get what you pay for in this world because uh, if you pay Mickey Mouse prices, then you're almost certain to be given a bike that reflects uh, that budget. But it goes uh, without saying that uh, if I ever came into a bit of uh, disposable income and I was looking for an old uh, vintage classic to ride or even just to add to my bike uh, collection, then uh, certainly one of these Wasp solos uh, would be at the top of my list because these uh, Wasp RT3s to me are the epitome of what uh, you're looking for in an old 1960s Scrambler. A, a beautiful handmade uh, chassis with uh, lots of nicely polished uh, chrome or nickel and uh, alloy and a power plant that even looks like it could have originally been designed to fit into this uh, rind tucked chassis. But certainly a fantastic piece of engineering with the looks uh, to match and uh, let's face it, who wouldn't want uh, one of these beauties sitting in their workshop or garage? Well, I hope you enjoyed that lovely uh, look around uh, that Rind Tut Wasp uh, 600 uh, cc solo uh, machine, uh, built of course by the guys at uh, Wasper, an absolutely stunning uh, looking uh, vintage scrambler. Now coming up next here on my channel, we will be uh, showcasing all of the bikes and of course all of the racing from the Scottish Classic Round 3 event that was held recently at uh, Straven. So if you're into your old vintage and classic dirt bikes, then uh, please try and subscribe to my channel and that way you won't miss out on any future videos uh, that I post. So from us all here at uh, Classic Dirt Bike TV, uh, thanks again for watching and we'll see you soon.